Today on Newswatch, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump clash on the debate stage after a weekend of shocking revelations. Did Clinton hammer a nail into the Trump campaign's coffin? Plus, devastation from North Carolina all the way to Haiti. See how survivors are finding hope in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. And anti-Israel activists around the world chanting for its destruction. Why do they hate the only true democracy in the Middle East? Thanks for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Caitlin Burke. Sunday night's debate turned into a slugfest as Hillary Clinton tried to score points from the new Donald Trump scandal. While Trump was apologetic, he also fought back, hitting Clinton on the email scandal and more. As David Brody reports from St. Louis, Missouri, this second presidential debate got ugly. The tone was set early on when Clinton and Trump wouldn't even shake hands. It also didn't take long for the much talked about video of Trump's lewd comments to come up. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. He has said that the video doesn't represent who he is. But I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. From that point, though, Trump went on the offensive, bringing up her husband's past immoral conduct. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. So you can say any way you want to say it, but Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attack them viciously. Just before the debate, Trump held a press conference with four women who say Bill Clinton abused them. He also invited them to the debate. But Trump wasn't done, moving on to other subjects like those infamous deleted emails. If I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Clinton played defense on new email leaks revealing that during those paid Wall Street speeches, she talked of needing both a public and private position on certain issues, leaving her open to being two-faced. As I recall, that was uh, something I said about Abraham Lincoln uh, after having seen the wonderful Steven Spielberg movie called Lincoln. Now she's blaming the lie on the late, great Abraham Lincoln. That's one that I have. Okay, Honest Abe. Honest Abe never lied. That's the good thing. That's the big difference between Abraham Lincoln and you. Along with the Zingers, Trump had some missteps, like admitting he hasn't paid individual federal income taxes for years. Did you use that $916 million loss to avoid paying personal federal income taxes for of years? Of course I do. Of course I do. And so do all of her donors. He also admitted he and running mate Mike Pence don't see eye to eye on foreign policy in Syria. He and I haven't spoken and I disagree. Clinton didn't make any major mistakes. Instead, this debate came down mostly to insults. Secretary Clinton, does Mr. Trump have the discipline to be a good leader? No. I'm shocked to hear that. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not only my opinion, it's the opinion of many others. Uh, national security experts, Republicans, former Republican members of Congress. Meanwhile, Trump got personal when talking about Clinton's recent comments that half of his supporters were a basket of deplorables. She has tremendous hate in her heart. And when she said deplorables, she meant it. And when she said irredeemable, they're irredeemable. You didn't mention that. But when she said they're irredeemable, to me, that might have been even worse. The only thing worse may have been a presidential debate that hit a new low in American history. David Brody, CBN News, in St. Louis, Missouri. Hurricane Matthew may be gone now, but its effects will be felt for months. The storm unleashed, unleashed devastating winds and flooding, killing hundreds of people from the Carolinas to the Caribbean. John Jessup reports from Florida on the most powerful storm to hit the Atlantic region in years. Vanessa Gwen wanted to be in church Sunday, eager to give thanks that she and her family survived the storm. 
The back of their home is mostly glass, and while downed trees and scattered debris surrounded them, the Gwens found their home intact. The only casualty? Blinds on the back porch. Like I was telling my son, he was like, Mom, we don't have power. And I said, but you know, there's people who don't have house. He says, Mom, we don't have internet, but there's people who don't have shelter. So, you know, you, have, you cannot be selfish. Friends Deborah and Talitha Porti found a toppled tree on their roof. What goes through your mind knowing that, first of all, the storm could have been worse, right. and then secondly, the damage to your home could have been more than what it is? Well, it lets us know that regardless, God is in control. I know without a shadow of a doubt, it was only God. Others weren't as fortunate. Matthew washed ashore at a strong Category 4, downing power lines, uprooting trees, and ripping off roofs. Majid Khan spent a day cleaning up the aluminum canopy from his convenience store. It was blown over. It was all over the road. Other than that, we are very thankful to God, and we made it okay. Also thankful, residents who stayed at a school shelter in Flagler County. This one here was supposed to be very bad, but... Praise the Lord, it wasn't. <laughs> the Floridians we met all acknowledged for the most part they dodged a bullet. Still, stretches of the Florida coast sustained significant damage like Highway A1A. This scenic road, parts of it caved in, other parts were washed away by ocean water. Officials estimate the damages here could be one of the costliest storms in U.S. history. Floodwaters besieged communities in Georgia and South Carolina. And in North Carolina, Matthew's storm surge triggered historic flooding that proved deadly. Water can kill, and that's exactly what has happened, sadly, in North Carolina, and we still have those dangers ahead of us. Thousands had to be rescued, more than 600 in Fayetteville alone. Just look at this video of a dramatic rescue of a mother and her toddler who clung to a car as rising water closed in. Hold on, ma'am, he's gonna come out. In Virginia, hundreds of thousands lost power and the governor called in the National Guard to assist with flooding. The worst devastation undoubtedly came in Haiti, where estimates of the death toll are around a thousand and counting, and now growing concerns of a cholera outbreak. CBN's Operation Blessing is on the ground handing out chlorine needed to provide safe drinking water and to prevent waterborne diseases like cholera. OB also has teams on the ground in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Amen. Pastor Derek Jackson, without electricity at his own home, helped serve others who rode out the storm in area shelters. He says events like these can open the door to share the gospel. First show them uh, the love of Jesus Christ and then be able to communicate in words the gospel message. A simple act that goes a long way in times like these. John Jessup, CBN News, Volusia County, Florida. Despite widespread devastation in Haiti, hundreds of believers headed straight to church Sunday to give thanks. Even after losing loved ones and homes, Haitian survivors picked their way through the rubble of their broken country to sing praise and pray in damaged churches. Some gathered under open skies after Matthew ripped away roofs and even walls of their sanctuaries. Meanwhile, over in the Bahamas, churches were also hit hard by Matthew. It's a disaster as far as the um, building is concerned. Everything is out. It's finished. So we, we, we are trusting the Lord to make a way, and I know He will make a way for all things work together for good. The walls on both sides of Pastor Barbara's church were completely blown away. On Sunday, North Korea celebrated the 10th anniversary of its first nuclear bomb test. And as Dale heard reports, experts warn that this threat is growing. Repeated international efforts to stop North Korea's nuclear program have failed. And now it seems all South Korea and its U.S. ally have left is deterrence including a preemptive strike or the threat of nuclear retaliation. Uh, South Korea's defense minister says, we have clarified several times that if North Korea shows imminent signs of using nuclear weapons, we can launch a self-defensive preemptive nuclear strike. American UN envoy Samantha Power was in South Korea for the anniversary and said the U.S. would use every tool it had including the military, to deter North Korea. Satellite surveillance of North Korea indicates it is preparing for another nuclear test. It's not only clear that the U.S. efforts to stop North Korea's nuclear program have failed, but that the communist nation intends to become a major nuclear threat. 
A new report from the RAND Corporation says coupled with its missile program, North Korea could have up to 100 missile-launched nuclear weapons within just four years. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Two California police officers were honored at a vigil on Sunday after being shot and killed this past Saturday. A group of mourners created the memorial outside the Palm Springs Police Department. Bouquets, written messages, and candles were laid outside police headquarters, remembering Jose Vega and Leslie Zarebny. The two officers were shot dead after a domestic disturbance and long standoff. A third officer was wounded. The alleged shooter, 26-year-old John Felix, was arrested and will be charged with murder. He could face the death penalty. One of the largest evangelical college ministries in the U.S. has asked staff members who support same-sex marriage to quit. InterVarsity Christian Fellowship recently made the announcement after a position paper on keeping sex reserved for marriage. Employees who disagree are required to leave within two weeks. Since the legalization of gay marriage, 51% of younger people now believe homosexuality should be accepted, and Christian groups are struggling to navigate the issue. Two cabinet departments in the Obama administration exaggerated public support for special tra transgender bathroom rights in schools. The Department of Education and the Justice Department said there was, quote, a growing chorus of people demanding that transgenders be allowed to use the school facilities of their choice. But a nonprofit group called Public Advocate says that's not true. Through the Freedom of Information Act, it found that only six citizens wrote letters supporting transgenders. There were 27 pre-written form letters from people as well. Public Advocate says the Obama administration also overwhelmingly minimized the number of public responses opposing the move. Christian music has been banned from school buses in Siloam Springs, Arkansas. The school district told one of their bus drivers to stop playing a Christian radio station while taking kids to school. The complaint was filed by the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which is a group of atheists and agnostics. An attorney from that group said, quote, given the content of the programming and its proselytizing nature, young and impressionable students cannot be forced to listen to such programs. The superintendent agreed with the demand, saying they were just trying to avoid promoting religion. Coming up, the true origins behind the growing movement to boycott all things Israel. It may surprise you to hear it wasn't the Palestinians. Do you suffer from aches and pains due to poor circulation? Are tired, aching legs slowing you down? There's no longer any need to suffer. Introducing the Revitive Circulation Booster. Your leg muscles act like a second heart, and they pump oxygen-rich blood to help you move more freely. But poor circulation restricts the body's ability to perform this vital function. The result can be daily pain that impacts your everyday life. The Revitive Circulation Booster helps relieve the effects of poor circulation using wide pulse waveforms. These waveforms increase blood flow by as much as 53%. Many of my patients have used this same kind of technology for many years very successfully. With Revitive, you can put this powerful therapy to work at home. With 99 individual settings, you control the pulse intensity while you increase circulation, relieve aches and pains, and improve muscle strength. Revitive is so effective, it's received hundreds of five-star reviews on the UK's most popular shopping website. And now, the FDA has cleared this powerful Class II medical device for at-home use in the United States. I have tried everything to get rid of my pain, and nothing has worked like Revitive. And even better, it's not a drug. My granddaughter asked me to dance with her. Well, I can't <laughs> turn down my granddaughter, right? So I danced two long dances with her, and I would never have been able to do that without Revitive. Take advantage of Revitive's limited-time pain-free guarantee. Try Revitive for a full 60 days. Use it for as little as 20 minutes per day. If it doesn't significantly improve your quality of life, return it for a full refund. We'll even pay return shipping. That's how confident we are in the power of Revitive. Call 1-800-276-0753 or go to tryrevitive.com. You don't have to live with pain. You just have to take the leap and try Revitive. Call 1-800-276-0753 or online at tryrevitive.com. It's one of the most powerful anti-Israel movements in the world today, the BDS movement. 
That stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions. It's very well-funded, and it's spreading across college campuses here in the U.S. Dale Hurd brings us the story. BDS activists will tell you they're only defending the rights of Palestinians. But when they chant from the river to the sea, they're calling for the complete destruction of Israel. Our movement, the BDS movement, the Palestine Solidarity Movement is finally starting to reframe the conversation, and that's why they're so afraid. The BDS movement is growing and has become a force on more and more college campuses. It is aimed at only one nation, the only democracy in the Middle East. No other country, just Israel. Richard Millett tracks the BDS movement through his website. They won't be calling for boycotts of America who they don't agree with, or Britain, British government policy that they don't agree with, before we get into China, Russia, Syria, Saudi Arabia. There is no boycott, Dale, so you, you answer why. The answer to that question can be found in the answer to another important question. Who founded the BDS movement? BDS leaders say the movement was launched in 2005 by the Palestinian Civil Society. But the evidence shows that is not true. Watch this video of BDS leaders discussing the origin of the movement at a conference in May of this year. Ilan Pape is director of the European Center for Palestinian Studies at the University of Exeter in England. He's considered a leading intellectual in the BDS movement. Here, Pape admits that the Palestinians did not create the BDS movement. It's, it's well, also active in it. Well, the Palestinians launched the BDS in 2005 and 2004. Yes. It's... <laughs> Really, yes, okay. For historical records, yes. Okay. That's important. It's important. It's important. It is important because if the Palestinians did not begin the BDS movement, then the question, of course, is who did? BDS expert Professor Gerald Steinberg in Jerusalem says BDS is a creation of European socialists and Muslim nations who oppose Israel led by the 57-nation Organization of the Islamic Conference, the largest voting bloc at the United Nations. They get together with the radical left, started with the Soviet Union, certainly filters over to the Trotskyites and the Labour Party in the UK, and many other radical allies. And the fact that this is in many ways a European radical political movement makes it even less legitimate. There have been boycotts of Israel since before the creation of the State of Israel. Some even trace the boycotts back to Nazi Germany in 1933. But the modern BDS movement took shape at the 2001 UN Conference Against Racism in Durban, South Africa, an event so rife with blatant anti-Semitism that the U.S. and Israeli delegations walked out. Kenneth Marcus is president of the Louis D. Brandeis Center for Human Rights Under Law. People were distributing or selling copies of the so-called Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Uh, there were people there supporting Nazism and urging a return uh, to Nazi anti-Semitism. From that movement, the new BDS campaign emerged. Another key question is who funds BDS? Steinberg says the movement gets hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Some of its funding is difficult to track. But if you live in a Western nation, there's a good chance you help fund it through your tax dollars and perhaps even your tithe. The BDS movement gets most of its funding from the European Union, European national governments, and even the U.S. government, who give money to NGOs or non-governmental organizations that claim to fight for human rights, but who also oppose the state of Israel. Amnesty International. Ken Roth from Human Rights Watch. These organizations are funded by governments under the label of international aid, promoting human rights, promoting peace and development. The Swiss, the Swedes, the Norwegians, the British, the Germans, up and down. Uh, the money there is huge. Some Christian charities also give money to BDS. The webpage for Christian Aid makes it look like it only fights poverty. Drill down on their website and you'll find they also support BDS, as does the Presbyterian Church USA. And while the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement has been in one respect a failure, it has accomplished very little in the policy arena, 
it has succeeded in another area by spreading anti-Semitism across college campuses. What we're seeing increasingly is that BDS activists are intimidating student governments at colleges and universities to pay for their activities. And if they don't, there may be repercussions. Aggressively confronting and sometimes assaulting Jewish students and faculty at pro-Israel events. Ronnie Fraser, founding director of the Academic Friends of Israel, warns the next generation of leaders is being brainwashed, that Israel is the worst nation on earth. Students are being fed a diet of Israel is a racist state, Israel is a Zionist state, Israel equals the Nazis. We support the Antifada! With massive funding behind it, BDS is turning people against Israel and creating a generation of leaders who may someday try to carry out what some have said is the real goal of the BDS movement, the elimination of the state of Israel. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Up next, using the power of dance to fight the power of darkness, the unique project that tells the story of God's grace in the face of evil. A dance company in Virginia considered, considers its latest production as more than a ballet. They see it as an outreach to rescue people from the occult. Mark Martin brings us that story. With crisp, synchronized movements, members of the Masterworks Touring Company hone their skills at their Chesapeake, Virginia studio. Soon they'll don costumes to dance in the ballet Lily and the Gypsies. Masterworks founder Arnora Hummel wrote the production, a story of a young woman who is redeemed from evil and saved by God's grace. And then she realizes the truth and goes and saves her friend and then sees her parents there and they're united again. Hummel says she believes the idea for the ballet came from the Lord. It just came to me within about an hour. He gave me the whole story and said this was to combat the enemy from pulling young people into the occult. A lot of people are involved in this production. Around 50 dancers and actors are bringing Lily and the Gypsies to life. Those who are a part of it say it's much more than a dance. The main thing that I hope they take away is that no matter how far you've fallen and no, no matter how many paths you've taken, you can always get back to God's path. You can always come back. Every single person is on fire for the Lord and really wants to take this message and show the world the evil that exists and how we can have authority over that in the name of Jesus Christ. Hummel hopes audiences receive a revelation of God's power that our God is all in all, all powerful, all consuming. Mark Martin, CBN News, Chesapeake, Virginia. You can watch the performance of Lily and the Gypsies on the CBN News Facebook page, and you can find out when and where the ballet is being performed. In health news, just how long can people live? A study published in the journal Nature suggests there may be a limit to our lifespan around 115 years. The oldest documented person in modern times lived to be 122. The researchers say that lifespan can't be extended too much because of the complexity of the aging process. But some specialists say the new study doesn't take into account other research, and they think the human age limit can eventually be increased so that people live even longer. Others question that, and some experts say that for now, people should focus on eating better and exercising so they can stay healthy in their twilight years. That's it for now on CBN News Watch. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care about most at CBNNews.com. And tell us what you think about the stories you've seen here. You can do that on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day.